I've been getting a lot of questions recently about the chord pad functionality in Cubase, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at some tips and tricks. The chord pads are located in the lower zone editor. If you don't see the lower zone editor active, simply go to the center icon of the three icons in the upper right hand corner and click there to show the lo lower zone editor. Here you'll see different tabs and we want to select the chord pads. If for some reason you don't see chord pads active, click on the setup icon and just select chord pads until there's a check mark to the left of it. We could think of the chord pads as actually the ability to load up a chord, to take a single MIDI note, trigger that chord, and to pass it to the selected MIDI track. We could load up various presets by clicking on a preset icon, or we could just load in our own chords by clicking on the left center edge, and we could choose chords like so. If I wanted to do D minor chord with different tensions, as well as inverted characteristics. Or if I wanted to right click, I could just say assign a pad for MIDI input and play a chord. These chords can have different voicing. So if I wanted to play my D minor chord, I currently have it set as a piano player. If I wanted to have a guitar player voicing, I can just click directly there to switch different voicings. Now when we could have these chords also be suggested to us by the chord assistant. So I could open up a chord assistant from the icon here on the left, or I could say I'm in the key of C and I want to use C as the origin for my chord assistant. And at this point, I could look at it in two different ways. I could look at it based on circle of fifths or proximity. So if I want to see an audition different chords, I could say, oh, the A minor sounds good. And let's say if I wanted to have an F chord there, but let's say I want something that's really unexpected, like an A flat augmented chord. I could just drag this and we could see different chords. Now, when we have our different chords laid out for us, we could trigger these chords from our MIDI note messages starting on C1. And once chords are loaded up, we could have different settings here for tensions. or different voicings of the chords. And you may notice that the other chords are kind of following the voicings of this chord, and that's because they're in adaptive voicing. So if I wanted to, I could set the voicing independent by clicking on the voicing for the individual tab, or if I right click, I could just turn off adaptive voicing for that particular pad and as I do this and adjust the voicing these two won't be affected. You could have external MIDI remote control so if I wanted to come over here and click on the remote control tab we can now activate and we see these green keys that are highlighted and what these will do is take each of the chords and if I hit C and C2 and C sharp 2, that will adjust the voicings for that particular chord pad. D and D sharp 2, different tensions. And E2 and F2, transpose. If I wanted to transpose all of the chord pads globally, I just use my pitch bend wheel, like so. The beauty of this is that we can now take, let's say I wanted to layer my roads and a string patch. I could come here and just using one finger to switch between different chords and one finger to switch between different tensions, I could kind of come up with an interesting song that I probably wouldn't have come up with otherwise.
And now it's recorded as if I played all those different elements, even though I've only played one finger for voicing tensions and transposition and one finger for the chords. Now, if I didn't want it to be a block chord, one of the things I could do also is just activate sections. And when we see sections, what we could do now is as I trigger these four notes, and this would be G2, A2, B2, C3, this would automatically play the different chord tones. So I wouldn't hear anything of the chord, but as I hit G2, A2, B2, C3, So if you're not a keyboard player, you could just play these four notes and it will automatically transpose to the chord tones within the chord and that could be recorded as well. At times you may want to actually extract the chords from a particular piece of music. So let's say if I have a piece of MIDI that I've recorded and I want to use my piano part as kind of the basis for the elements, what I could do is I'm going to select my MIDI part here and we'll look at it in the score editor here in the lower zone. And what I want to do is to right click and we're going to say, let's go to our chord track and we'll choose create chord symbols. And what this is going to do is automatically create chord symbols on our chord track that have been derived from this particular piano part right here. So I'm gonna to go to my chord pads and what I want to do now is to assign the pads from the chord track. When I play back, I could play back the actual chords from the part. We showed how we could play the individual parts as sections. But one of the things that's also really handy is the concept of players. So I could, let's say I have a guitar part here. Now guitar players will often arpeggiate different chords. So what I want to do is to go to my settings and we'll choose players. And under guitar player, what you could do is we'll say pattern. And here I could import different MIDI loops, but I could also just drag, let's say I have a guitar part here we'll just listen to very quickly. So I'll just take this guitar part. Say so recorded with a MIDI guitar. So it's kind of how a guitar player would voice it. And I could just drag this part. So as soon as I just drag that, we'll now see our electric guitar. And as I trigger my chords, instead of playing a block chord, it's actually gonna play this particular sequence of notes, this arpeggiation. Now I could also layer these different elements and I could have two players together. So if I wanted to say, go to my piano and harp, I could say I wanted this as a pattern as my piano player. So I could take this. And let's layer that with another piano player on, on patterns. So I'm gonna take a guitar harp and some cello that are arco and pits. And I want to take my strings and I want this as playing chords. So now when I come here, I'll just go back to the beginning of our project. And we'll just choose this as our guitar player and playing chords. So my guitar harp will be my piano player as patterns. I want this as my piano player patterns and my string as guitar player and playing chords. So now. I could just simply play this. Now I could also just sequence on 
the chord track itself. So if I wanted to, now I could just say, well, just select, hit record. And you could just have the MIDI parts directly here from the chord pads and doing that all with two fingers on your MIDI controller. So as you can see, once you start playing around with the chord pads, it's great for a mobile solution where perhaps you have a two octave MIDI controller with you and you're traveling, or if you just want to experiment with fresh and new and exciting chords that you wouldn't otherwise use, the chord pads are very exciting to work with. So if you found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.